If I say good morning, you have to say good morning. <laughs> good morning. So how do you say good morning in Khmer? Amen. <laughs> Let's start with prayer. Lord, come and speak to us today. We would like to hear from you today. We just sang a song, Make Me a Servant. And I pray that we will make a commitment to become a servant of God today. I thank you. I praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When the Word of God says that don't become a servant of man, for Americans, it's very difficult to understand. I am Korean. I was born in Korea. But I left Korea when I was 12 years old. And I went to America. And I lived there almost 50 years. So I look like Korean. But I'm actually Korean American. So when Koreans and Americans hear about becoming a servant to the king, they said, oh, we don't understand because we don't have a king. But in Cambodia, you have a king. <laughs> so you understand. Because actually in the kingdom, all the citizens are the subject to the king. I also studied at England. England also has a queen. So everybody in England actually belongs to the Queen. And so the Cambodian king, if he likes somebody, he could write and say, now nah, you could become a citizen of my country then that person can become a Cambodia citizen. So king has a lot of power. And everybody that belongs to king becomes his servant. As I was praying about this message, the, the person that I envision is Daniel of the Old Testament. Daniel was captured as a slave and had to serve, forced to serve a king. And he served the king very, very well. So although he was a servant of men, although his job was to become a, his servant, 
But in his heart, he was a servant of God. The first Corinthians it says that you are bought with price, so do not become servants of men. Apostle Paul is not just talking to the people of Corinth, but he's talking to us today. He's telling you today, do not become servants of men. Because Jesus had to die on the cross and pay the price of the cross to buy you and save you. So I was talking to uh, one of my uh, employee, and she said that I have to buy a brand new motor. And she said, I need $2,500 to buy a brand new moto. I said, why do you want to spend so much money? I said, I bought my moto 15 years ago for $700. It's still working fine. Just go buy a used moto for $1,000, you'll be fine. But she said, no, no, I want to buy a brand new moto, pay $2,500 for it. But she does not have money. So she had to borrow $2,000 from bank. And she will be paying $50 for many, many years. See, if, some, if something is valuable, the price is higher. And Paul says, every one of you, Jesus had to pay the ultimate price of death and the cross to buy you. Jesus was willing to pay the high price to buy you. See, you have a price tag that says, I was bought with the blood of Jesus. So you are very, very valuable. You are so precious and valuable. Why do you want to become servants of men? The Romans 622. Uh, if you could show in the PowerPoint, that would be great. Romans 622. It said, You've been set free from sin, have become slaves to God. Why don't you read together in Kamai? Amen. You have been set free from sin, so now become the slave to God. The word slave here is in Greek is doulos. Doulos is a very special term. See, if you are born as a slave from a slave parents, then you have no choice, but you are a slave. 
bạn chắc bảo sân chỉ dương cát à, bảo sân chỉ nục nôn về núi cứ bảo sân chỉ cát đó chỉ nẹp bầm ra chỉ bao bầm ra thì khi bị chết thì bao bầm ra chắc cứ dương chỉ nẹp bầm ra so if you're a slave you cannot tell your lord or the master okay I decide not to become a slave from today you cannot do that you're a slave bạn bảo sân chỉ dương chỉ bao bầm ra hay mình men tôi bảo cọp chảo vai tháo chảo vai anh chăm chút thôi chỉ bao bầm ra ở tì dương mình hay bảo bảo cọp chẳng bàn là lời but the word slave here is not that kind of slave Because it uses the term doulos. Doulos means a free man who is not a slave before, but start loving the master so much, I willfully choose to become your slave, sir, and then becomes doulos. Doulos is a slave who chooses to be because he had a choice to either become slave or not. He chooses to become slave of God. And as a followers of Jesus Christ, you must make a decision either to follow Jesus, become his slave, or follow the world and become slave to the world. I believe that God is going to raise up this Daniel generation in Cambodia. Technically, you are subject to the king, but you make a choice. But I become, I want to be servant, do lost to God. Because you cannot serve two. There is only one. Matthew 6.24 says, No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Why don't you read that verse together? Amen. Loud and clear. I heard the I heard Kamai and I understood. And then I, I sense that you are saying. I want to serve somebody. If I have to serve somebody, I want to make it Jesus. Amen. Amen. See, I've been married to my wife for 38 years. And I love my wife. But I always tell her, I love you but next to Jesus. The moment I love her more than Jesus, I am doomed. So, so G, my wife Jenny says, Oh, me too, I love you next to Jesus. See, I know a lot of young people most of you are not married and you someday you're going to marry someone you love and but don't make that person number 1 in your life there's only one number 1 See, in every man and woman's heart there is a the throne in our heart there is a, a place that we need to put our king into our heart 
bà chẳng đăng thà nó không cùng chặt bò dương đẹp nè nó phê đại dương sẽ lại nhà nam mùi hết cứ dương trong ban là đun một đặt nó chặt bò dương cứ gì ta nè ai chỉ sát because you're a Cambodian citizen you all have king in the political arena bà chẳng dương mưa vì chỉ không ta là cái đường But in your heart, make sure Jesus is your King, your Lord, and your Savior. When Cambodia really has this kind of Christians committed to serve God, then you are going to see revival breaking out. And this young generation is not going to be bound by the world. I came here almost 20 years ago. And I serve uh, the Lord with your pastor, Pastor Kim, in Kampong Cham area. And at people at Kampong Cham, the young people were very innocent, and and they just they were just innocent. <laughs> But 20 years later, I see meet a lot of young people. They are not so innocent in Cambodia anymore. They watch too much Facebook, they watch too much YouTube, they are so full of the world. They said almost every young people are now addicted to their phone. And the world constantly fills your mind, your heart with garbage. And you start desiring after all these worldly people's fame and fortune. He said, oh, I want to look like her, I want to what he has, and I need these goods because I deserve it. Did you know that young people, teenage suicide rate in Cambodia is going up and up and up right now? It is a problem in Cambodia. And, and maybe you're thinking, well, but I never, never, not, not, none of my friends kill themselves. But all over Cambodia, all over the world, the teenage suicide rate is skyrocketing. Well, they used to be very happy living a normal life, but now through SNS and Facebook, they said, how come they are having more fun than me? So instead of being happy and content with serving the Lord, they say, but I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this. You cannot serve both God and money. When we make a decision to serve God, then God is going to take care of you. 
God will provide for you. God will need all your needs. But that's not the reason that I serve God. I pray that all of you would get older and marry a wonderful spouse and have a wonderful house and nice car and enjoy a wonderful life in Jesus Christ. All those things will happen to you when you obey God. But that's not the reason why you follow God. There's a huge difference. When you become a disciple of Jesus Christ and become servant of God, then God will provide for you. That's wonderful. But because of the provision, I'm going to become a servant of God is, is a wrong. I told you I've been married for 38 years. And we have our love relationship. If my wife Jenny is thinking, okay, I need to be nice to my husband and I have to do this, this, so that I could get this from him, then I will be so broken, heartbroken. Because love is not conditional. You don't love somebody to get something from. If you come to me and say, Oh, I'm going to be nice to Pastor O from now, and I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this for him, so that he could give me $10,000 someday. Then our relationship is not real. In the same way, we cannot approach God and that I'm going to become your servant so you provide for me. No. Just serve God. Just love God. Just take up your cross daily and follow Him. Sometimes, sometimes you're going to have wonderful time. Sometimes you're going to have difficult time. There's always up and there's always down in life. See, a lot of young people are sitting there looking at me like this. A lot of old people are saying, yes, yes, yes. Because <laughs> life will have up and down. You don't just praise God when things are doing well. The Bible says, even in darkness, I was there. In the most difficult time of your life, God is there. And the happiest time of your life, God is there. See, I serve God, I became servant of God so that I could serve Him, not because I could have good things in life. John 8, 32, 36 says the following, Then you will know the truth, and truth will set you free. Amen. Amen. 
Why don't you read that together? Wow. Freedom is the greatest gift that God has given to us Christians. If you truly follow Jesus Christ, you must have freedom. You know, because I met Jesus, that I don't really worry about where I'm going to live, what I'm going to do, what I must do, or how other people think about me. I know some of you are thinking, but oh, Pastor, I don't know what I want to do with my life. I don't know what I'm good at. I mean, am I going to make enough money? And all these problems. I have answer for you. You do three things. Number one, you pray. You pray, you pray, you pray, and then number two, you hear from the Lord. And when you hear from the Lord, number three, you obey. Amen. So it's P H O. Pray, hear, obey. I, I, I did that ever since I was 18. So I'm not just saying this. I did this for 42 years of my life. Most of you are not 42. So even your entire life, for I spent 42 years doing three things. Pray, hear God, and obey. I, I was 19 years old and I was third year in college I was walking down the street Lord start impressing in my heart that you will marry Jenny I was 19 years old. She was 21 years old. So I went to her apartment, knock on her door. Lord, I said, Jenny, Lord said, I need to marry you. We're not boyfriend girlfriends. Lord just said that you were going to marry Jenny. So I proposed to her. And she said, okay. But I had to finish college. So when I finished college at 22, I married her. And I said, Lord, what should I do with my life? Oh, why don't you go help your brother and do business? So I was a businessman. We were exporting uh, engine oil from America to Korea. I had a factory in China. 450 ladies work for us. We are working with a company in Taiwan. 
We're working with company in Mexico. And we're working with company in France. And I was a businessman. Because that's what God told me to do. Because you pray, you hear, and you obey. In 1998, Lord says, now drop all your business and start a church for me. I said, Lord, I'm a businessman. I don't know anything about church planting. And Lord said, I know how to plant church. So I planned my first church, 1991. And Lord, just keep on asking me to plant church so I end up planting five churches in 20 years. And 2001, Lord said, now go to Cambodia. Now I've been here 20 years. See, the reason I'm free because I don't get to decide what I want to do. I get to do what He wants me to do. And people say, oh, how do you hear from God like that? What was the first step? Pray. Yeah, but how do you pray? How much do you pray a day? When was the last time you fasted and prayed? When was the last time that you spent all night praying? When was the last time you woke up 4 in the morning so you could do early morning prayer? How much time do you spend per day in prayer? And if you really think about it, hmm, I think I pray three times a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Then it's hard to hear from the Lord. <laughs> See, while you're praying, Lord, thank you for this breakfast, Lord's not going to open his heart to you. I just finished 21 day fasting recently. I do 21 day fasting regularly. I did 40 days fasting four times. Unless we pray, we cannot hear from the Lord. Don't expect to hear from God doing three times a day meal prayer. Nineteen seventy, Korea was much, much, much poorer country than Cambodia. Korea was so poor, 
America had to give them the wheat, otherwise there'll be people dying of hunger in Korea. So 20,000 Christians in Korea 1970, they said, we're going to fast and pray. They went to this island in Korea. 20,000 Korean Christians fasted four days and cried out to God to Lord save our country, bless this country. It will be something like 20,000 Christians in Cambodia going to the rabbit, rabbit island in Kaib and fasting four days and crying out to God. Just, I, I, I get so excited thinking about that. <laughs> wow, that will be awesome. Because Cambodia is in desperate need. See, I, I tell people that, can you pray for Cambodia? Because young people in Cambodia are killing themselves. And, and, and most, most people I meet in the world, they said, why would you ask me? Why would I pray for Cambodian teenagers? I don't really care about Cambodia. They, they don't even know where Cambodia is. They, they, the first time they heard the word Cambodia in their life. So don't expect other people, other Christians to pray for you. If you like to see Cambodia transformed, get in habit of fasting and praying for your own country. We don't need maybe 20,000 now. Maybe we just need 300 who could regularly fast and cry out to God for Cambodia. All we need is this Gideon's army that's ready to serve the Lord and become servants of God. Nineteen ninety, I was approached by two young people. Nineteen ninety. Two young college students with two guitar came to my office and said, "Sir, we would like to do praise movement in America." Uh, I said, can you become our pastor? I laughed and I said, you want me to become pastor over the two, two of you? Why would I help you? Because we love Jesus. So what? Everybody should love Jesus. So he said, well, we want to start a praise movement. He said, don't start praise movement until you make it into prayer movement. I asked him, when do you meet? He said, Monday night, sir. 
bà chân dùng chồng ca chuông đầu quỳ là thằng ai chăn để dùng can you fast once a week can you fast monday every monday when you meet fast and then ask and ask people to come and join if you have 300 people in your one day night meeting then call me và chân cứ quan ban nhà thang chỗ tổ của mình hay nó quạt tất nhiên nè ạ thì thang to thang là thằng ai chăn hay ạ thang to và hôn cho đó miết một lúc bay rồi nè và chỗ luôn chỉ buổi nè hay bỏ sân chỉ miết một lúc bay rồi nè chỗ luôn chân thao dụng trong một tầng and I forgot about it hay chúng có bán lên chân 6 months later I get a call. Says, Sir, we are ready. Says, ready for what? We now have 300 people fasting every Monday and we're praying every Monday night. Amen. And I went there. There's 300 college students. Crying out to God and said, God, use my generation for your kingdom, Lord. They're fasting every Monday for all six months. They wanted their generation to be served by God to bring the revival to their generation. And I was so moved. And they start writing their songs and they start dancing before the Lord. I said, hey, let's have a meeting. And 6,000 people showed up. It became a movement now, 5,000, 4,000. It became a movement, it became a ministry. He said, let's, let's bring this revival to all of America. So we got two huge bus and then 40 people went 40 days all over America and Canada and will fly in, fly in, preach, preach, preach. And revival broke out. A lot of young people saying, well, I want to serve, I want to serve God. And two, three hundred people became a pastors and missionaries out of the movement. Servant of God does not pray, Oh God, I just want a comfortable life. I just want good things in my life. I just want to prosper. I want to use you. I want to use prayer so that I could benefit me. Servant of God, cry out to God in prayer. Servant of God is more concerned about God and His kingdom than Himself. Servant of God, pray. And they hear from the Lord. And they obey. I am just a foreigner in this land. The Cambodian proverb says, well, there is a harbor and there is a ship. The ship leaves, harbor remains. The port, harbor remains, but the ship leaves. 
Mas pisa com pisa daí não sou capaz de dar ele. Mas pisa de nada. Tem que, tá? Tá? Compung o, compung ai, meda o. Ba, meda tu tau compung nau. Ba, lei sou pisa com ai. Ba, tu tau compung nau. We we have to leave someday. Ba, chăng cứ bê lắc nhung ở mẹp cụ nhóm cứ chúng ta ta tàu hôn nó lại xây dựng. The future of Cambodia does not belong to us. I'm not going to fast and pray for this country. Unless I see young people who's willing to say, I'm willing to pray for this country. I want to see revival break out in young, in among Cambodia people. Then I'll join you. You are bought with the great price. Jesus died on the cross to buy you. Please don't become servants of the world. But become slaves of God. You cannot serve world and God together. Become slaves of God. Then and only then you have the freedom in Christ. I pray that you become the starting point of the Daniel generation of Cambodia. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I just pray that the word of God is true. I don't want to serve the world. I want to serve you. God, as we fervently seek you in prayer, speak to us. And we're willing to obey. Because I would like to see young Cambodian people rise up and become servants of God. Although they are subject of the king, but in their heart they serve the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, our God and Savior. I thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.